Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to San Pedro Catholic Church. COVID guidelines still being in effect, so please wear a mask at all times over the nose and mouth. Families can sit together, keep six feet apart from other parishioners. Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Frankie. This Mass is being offered in loving memory of Berta Jimenez, and special intentions for Raphael Lastra. Please stand for the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God, our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Prayer on this 27th Sunday in ordinary time, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and for your great glory, God, heavenly King, 
the God Almighty, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord, Lord, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. We sing our prayer. You are seated on the water of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone, Holy One. You alone are the Lord. Lord, and I the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, our Father, Amen, Amen. And all the priests to people of God's will. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass in the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God, <clears throat> pardon me. The Lord God said, "It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him." So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals <clears throat> and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. <clears throat> Whenever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names <clears throat> The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Lord, the Lord bless you, Lord, the Zion. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the leader to their salvation perfect through sufferings. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you <clears throat> a reading from the holy gospel according to mark the pharisees approached jesus and asked is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife they were testing him he said to them in reply why did moses command you they replied moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismissal but Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be drawn to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, during the, the celebration of the golden anniversary, wedding anniversary, and Father O'Shea was the celebrant, noticed that John and Julie, they are both are very happy. And he said to John, John, you are quite a happy man. Tell me, what is your formula for a, such a long and successful marriage? John smiled and said, well, Father, it's very simple. 
I just say yes all the time. <laughs> well, if you want your marriage to be successful, <laughs> you might need to follow John's advice. Well, as you know, there may be a lot of talks about marriage. They consider marriage as a contract. Well, a contract is defined as, you know, the con 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 conditions attached to it. You know, it says exactly what is expected from all parties involved. But marriage is not a contract. What have to be a contract, it is a covenant. We speak of marriage as a covenant. It is an unconditional mutual pledge to love and serve one another forever, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health, in good times and in bad. Well, that's the formula. That's exactly what the couple said, you know, when I married them here. For better or for worse, it is a covenant. Nothing is expected from the married people while well, everything is expected from them. Well, there is no book that will say that the couple has to live a certain way. But one thing about marriage is that, you know, people oftentimes experience ups and downs. That's the way it is in life. Not every day is a rosy day, is a good day. There will be good days in a marriage and there will be some bad days too. You know, it is said behind a, a successful man, there is always a woman. But behind an unsuccessful man, there are at least two women. <laughs> a wise man said, a man who divorces his wife and marries another is not only foolish, but also more miserable. He ends up having two mothers in law well one is enough <laughs> so there are many things can be said you know about a marriage but one thing that the church wants us to know is that there are two conditions when people are free to marry either you know you've never been married before that's the first question you know you can call any priest and when you say to the priest father i want to get married Wait for those two questions. The first questions, are you both Catholic, right? And the second questions, have you been have you been married before? You know, the priest will always ask you that. If you have been married before, well, you need to tell the priest whether your partner is alive, you know? And if your partner is alive and you are divorced now, well, you cannot get married unless you get an annulment. And an annulment is not a divorce. It's the church finding out that the marriage you had was not a good marriage to begin with. In, in other words, it's not like, you know, when you an annulment, you got a divorce. <laughs> the church doesn't speak that way. It is that when you get an annulment, it said, well, there is a mistake in your first marriage. Whether you are too young to understand, you know, the young wow, when you get married, the better it is for the priest to get you an annulment. You know, if somebody has, you know, married when he was 19, you know, 18, 19, you know, and compared to somebody when he got married, he was like 40. Well, it's more difficult. The younger you are, the better it is for the priest to get the annulment. Uh, so uh, annulment is not always easy, and people get upset with the church whenever they don't get the annulment. But marriage is always intended for life. You know, it's not like for a couple of years. You know, one of the questions the priest asked when you come to see a priest to get married, he said, well, what is your intention? You know, do you want to marry her for the rest of your life? He said, no, 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 Father, it's only for five years. We've got to try. And I have to stop, you know, because people can also they want to get married for five years. You know, it's a commitment for life. As you know, psychologists and counselors they are talking about the stages of marriage. The first stage is the attraction. You may well remember when you see her, when you see him, you say, wow, oh, you know, he looks so good. You know, you are attracted to him or to her. That's the first stage. It's the funniest stage. You know, you cannot sleep. 
you know, yeah, I, I love those country singers when they are saying you are always in my, whatever it is, you know, I can see my life without you, <laughs> you know, you are always there. So there's many beautiful songs, that's the attraction, that's the first stage of marriage. And the second is the integration, when you try to understand each other, you know, a little bit, uh, trying to, when you see your partner doing certain things, you say, okay, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, you know, uh, the integration. Maybe, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. And the third stage is what we call the conflict stage. This conflict is when you start fighting, you know, for anything. The things that you, you know, they didn't bother you before, but now every single thing bothers you. That's the conflict. You go to the, the toilet seat, it's up. You know, you get upset, the woman get upset, they try to sit, yeah, and it's down, you know, and that's the conflict stage. And finally, that's the maturation, when couples stop fighting. Now they have a better understanding of each other. Do not keep score in your marriage. It's not that today, I often said that to, to the couple I married. You cannot say today I make the bed, and tomorrow is your turn. You know, I took the garbage out today, but tomorrow is your turn. You know, the day that you, you start keeping scores in your marriage is the day that your marriage begins to die. You know, there is no 50-50 in marriage. That is why it's not a contract. It is rather a covenant. Well, Pope Francis and Amoris Laetitia, in his apostolic exhortation, I'm always the teacher mean on love in the family. Pope Francis said, I thank God that families which are far, for all families that are far from considering themselves perfect, live in love, fulfill their calling, and keep moving forward, even if they, if they fall many times along the way. There is no perfect family. If you think that your neighbor has a perfect family and you don't, Take again, you know, and, and also it's not like God made certain, you know, some mar marriages just come from heaven. That is why they are successful. No way. You know, you have to put some work into it. Because I often say to the couple, falling in love may be easy, but living with each other may not, you know, because it requires, you know, self-sacrifice, self-denial. You have to deny yourself, you know, and, and otherwise, if you don't do that, your life is going to be very miserable. As you know, Moses' law in, in regards to marriage was very harsh. You know, it, it was only, it was permitted only for the husband to divorce his wife. The wife has no right to divorce the husband. It was always the husband that has to initiate a divorce decree. And it can be for anything. It can be not being a good cook. <laughs> the husband might say, she's not a good cook. So I'm divorcing her. And that's it. So the Pharisees, and of course, they know the law, Moses' law, which gave all the wives to the man, to the husband, and no wives to the, to the woman, woman. So they approached Jesus not because they didn't know the law. But the gospel said they went to Jesus with their question, about divorce is to test them. But Jesus' ideas about marriage was so much different than Moses' law. Jesus said, well, there is no such a thing as given, given a woman a degree of divorce. At the very beginning, you know, we, we find that passage in the Genesis, you know, they had the first reading, it says it very clearly. At the beginning, a man shall leave his house and stay with his wife and they both shall live together in one flesh, not two. And what God has joined together, men must not separate. In other words, Jesus gave a new definition of marriage. And they heard Jesus talking in public about it. But that was not good enough for the disciples. They waited until Jesus got home. And they said to Jesus, well, tell us more about it. And Jesus, of course, <laughs> told them more about marriage. You know, sometimes, you know, in, nowadays, uh, people are saying, why should people get married? Because divorce rate is hard. It is said out of three marriages, there's only, you know, two get divorced. It is very sad. 
And sometimes people might think that getting a divorce is a good thing. It is said, it is said that when you get the first divorce, you get a second one, and you get your third, you know, you are not happy. You might think that we find happiness, but your life will be more miserable. The more people getting married, you know, the more miserable they become. It's not like, I got the first one, I want to be happy. Wait, wait, you know, after a couple of years, they might say, well, this is not what I think. I think I was going to be happy, but it may not be the case. So the more people, uh, you know, people start getting divorced, they, you know, sometimes it takes them a while to stop. You know, they might get the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth, so on and so forth. So it is not about seeking your own happiness because people can become very unhappy in that relationship because it's always about them. It's not about their own happiness. They don't care about the happiness of the other partner. But when it comes to marriage, it's not about your own happiness that matters. It is always the happiness of the other partner. You know, you are not getting into marriage, you know, for, so that you can be happy, eh, happy. You know, you are getting into, into marriage so that uh, you can make your partner happy. If you have that, you know, things will be ha you know, better for you because they have the expectations. You know, uh, you know, if you have high expectations, believe it or not, about your partner, you're gonna be very disappointed. Men and women, they are not perfect. You know, <laughs> if you are not perfect, they don't ex expect your partner to be perfect either. You know? <laughs> You know, you have to be able to understand each other. And tolerance is a good thing for marriage. Sometimes people might think, well, I cannot tolerate this. You know, whenever, you know, he, I find his shoes in the living room. <laughs> it can happen. And especially men who waited longer to get married, they have sometimes bad habits. They carry those bad habits into their marriage. Perhaps there is. They used to leave their shoes in the living room and their mother used to take it out. But now, <laughs> you know, they're, they're still taking out when their mother is in the house. <laughs> you know, so get ready for older men. The older, you know, they get, it's not going to be easier. The more difficult it is to live with them. So, well, what is the secret of a happy life? Love each other. You know, love each other. Be patient with each other. Have tolerance in your marriage. You know, sometimes your partner will do things that you are not pleased with, but at the same time, be patient. You know, it's not like, well, I'm sick and tired of it. You know, uh, don't be, don't do things so quickly. You know, sometimes you might think that getting out of it will bring you happiness. It may not. You know, sometimes people always think that the grass is greener on the other side until they get to the other side. They realize that it is not. So love each other, and uh, St. Paul in his letter to the Colossians said that love is everything. Love is patience, it's not, snob it's not snobbish, you know, it supports everything, and love never ends. So as long as you love each other, you will stick by each other. Joe doesn't have to be the perfect man, but love him anyway. Maria doesn't have the most perfect woman on earth, but love her anyway. So make things easier for, for Maria, and Maria has to make things easier, you know, for Joe. So that's the covenant of holy matrimony. Again, it is not a contract, it is rather a covenant with unconditional love. We stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only. Be God, be God and not made. To him all things were made for, and for salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father in the Son, who with the Father in the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess in baptism for the forgiveness of sins and Well, then let us turn our hearts to the Lord, offering our needs and our lives. For those who shepherd the faithful, that they always seek God's will, and for all here present, that their faith and simplicity bring them a deeper understanding of God's reign, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders and legislators, that their policies support and strengthen families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by physical and mental illness, that they find courage in God, through whom all things are possible, and that catechists continue to deepen their love of the Word of God, and those seeking membership in the church hear the Word with open hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they rest in peace, and that their families find healing and comfort in offering and uniting their sufferings to those of our Lord Jesus Christ, especially those who have died alone in hospitals and for today's intentions, in loving memory of Berta Jimenez and special intentions for Raphael Lastra. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace, that all countries treat their citizens with dignity and respect, and for the end of oppressive regimes, terrorism, and violence in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Creator, you have given us salvation. May our prayers and strivings be acceptable as we await your coming. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Pray, brethren, that, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the welcome of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, others and everywhere, to give you thanks. Glory to the Father Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you so love the world that in your mercy you send us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience you have been restored this gift of yours, that by sinning we had lost disobedience. And so, Lord, with all we acclaim. Full of your glory, I in the highest. Blessed be I'm singing the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. May God lead up all these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them that the dew fall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this memo. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our death, Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, we will offer life in the chalice of salvation. The intense that you have held us body to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember all the church with all the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Berta Jimenez whom you have called from the to yourself, that she who was united with the son in the death is also born with him and is resurrection. Have mercy on us all. That is the blessed of God. We have for souls with salvation who are for the ages to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For him and with him and her name of God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honors is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 A command from the divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, and 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious and peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, John. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be there. Lord of Christ. Body 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 of Christ. Lord of Christ, Lord of Christ, Lord of Christ, Lord 
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Okay. May the Lord bless you, protect you always, Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you and protect you always, the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for quick announcements. One announcement. San Pedro's religious education classes have resumed for this school year. Classes began last Sunday via Zoom and are for grades kindergarten through confirmation. We encourage all children of our parish to join as we learn about the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the life and teachings of Jesus and our Catholic faith. We have a full and engaging online curriculum that runs September to May. For additional information and to register, please see the bulletin. And also, don't forget to continue saying the hurricane prayer. Please see the bulletin for additional information. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, before we go, I'd like to thank uh, John. You know, once again, thank you for your service. Thank you. I'd like to express our gratitude uh, to Alba, the computer person. She's making sure that we are. We have the mass online. And also Sue and Michael, thank you for your valuable service. Thank you for your beautiful singing. And of course, thank you to Tom. Thank you, Tom. 
<laughs> thank you. From Judy, thank you for your service. <laughs> you, yes. And Joanne, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I don't forget you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, the Ashers, Pat, Chip, and uh, of course, Jim and Sylvia, thank you for your service. Why did anyone celebrating uh, the birthday this week? We like to acknowledge you all. That's your birthday. Please stand for a special blessing from a distance. <laughs> yes, you can stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for her life. And uh, today she is so grateful for what you have done for her. And she asks for more blessing. Grant her good health. Many, Mary, our mother, protect her always. God our Father, God of many, many more years. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, happy birthday to you. <laughs> good, many, many more years. Thank you. All right. Anything else? What about the visitors? People who are here for the first time, we'd like to welcome our visitors. Okay, welcome to San Pedro. Very good. We'd like to welcome both of you to San Pedro. It's a beautiful church. Make yourself at home. Well, any wedding anniversary? No wedding anniversary today. Well, it's time to go home. This <laughs> time. For the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. We may go in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, good to see you. I love you. All right. Thank you. 